Looks like I'm cosplaying as the sofa today. The Netflix movie adaption of Tick Tick Boom is not what I thought it was gonna be. Yes, it's definitely still a love letter to Broadway and the theater community, but it doesn't paint with the broad strokes of grease paint and glitter that everyone else does. I mean, the joy is definitely there, but so are the hardships and the neuroses that come with being an artist. And everyone is loving it. It's getting praise across the board. Critics, audience members, theater people. Are we recognizing how rare it is that the entire theater community unanimously likes something? So now I'm trying to figure out where did they go right? What made Tick Tick Boom so good? And I think I have an answer, so let's discuss. If this is your first time seeing my face, hi! My name is Kat and I really like musicals. If you really like musicals, hit subscribe to join the musical theater internet cult. Because we're the future of musical theater, Scott. Thanks to Raycon for sponsoring this video. Question of the day, what did you think about Tick Tick Boom. Love it, hate it, not sure if you're gonna watch it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. First, a bit of background. Tick Tick Boom is based on the 2001 off-Broadway musical of the same name. It's the semi-autobiographical story of the late great composer Jonathan Larson before he changed the course of Broadway history by creating his hit masterpiece, Rent. I feel like Tick Tick Boom was originally a self-portrait and now the movie has reframed it as the enduring power behind Jonathan Larson's legacy. The film stars Andrew Garfield, Robin de Jesus, Alexandra Shipp, Vanessa Hudgens, Bradley Whitford, and so many more. Notably, this movie also serves as the directorial debut for Broadway's Lin-Manuel Miranda. If you haven't seen one of my reviews before, I generally try to keep it spoiler free, but because it's already based on a musical and we're going to be analyzing and discussing the movie, I'm not really sure what counts as a spoiler. So if you wanna be totally surprised, just mute the screen when it turns black and white. I gotta say right off the bat, I think my favorite detail was the structure. Tick Tick Boom, if you didn't know, was actually developed into a three person musical after Jonathan Larson's passing. Originally, he had actually developed it as a one-man rock monologue. And in the movie, they make an homage to this idea with those recurring performance shots of Jonathan on stage playing the piano, addressing the audience directly. I thought that was brilliant. I also just loved those performance shots because I feel like it added almost a music video element to it. I think a lot of movie musicals struggle with translating the raw energy of live performance onto a screen, and I think Tick Tick Boom was able to retain that energy with those performance shots. And the music is just phenomenal. Every single track is an absolute winner. Since I saw the movie, I've just had the album playing on repeat at all times, just playing in my ear, and you can too with today's sponsor. Hi. Today's video is sponsored by Raycon, a company that listens. Literally, Raycon is here to prove that premium audio shouldn't have to price you out. These are the new everyday earbuds, offering an improved rubber oil look and feel that's just so slick. They're absolutely gorgeous. I've got mine in the rose gold. Raycon's wireless earbuds are my favorite way to listen on the go. I have been using these every single day on my jog around the neighborhood. Pop these babies in, I bring my podcasts with me, and because they're wireless, I can actually still jog. There's a built-in microphone so you can take phone calls at the press of a button. You've got three different sound profiles that you can seamlessly swap between. Raycons start at half the price of other premium audio brands. They offer a 45-day happiness guarantee and you've got a 32-hour battery life with eight hours of continuous playtime. They actually have adjustable gel tips so you can get the best fit for your ear, which is an absolute game changer if you're like me and earbuds haven't fit properly in the past. Raycons are for everyone. They are so comfy and I know that they're not going anywhere. Click the link in the description box or head to buyraycon.com slash catsteal to unlock exclusive deals up to 30% off your Raycon order. Thanks to Raycon for sponsoring this segment. So let's talk a little bit more about the movie itself. Tick Tick Boom manages to combine the best of both cinema and theater. I feel like it's unlike any other movie musical we've seen before, or at least recently. It's completely different than like The Prom with its Technicolor jazz hands, or Dear Evan Hansen with whatever Dear Evan Hansen was trying to do. It even feels different from In the Heights too, which I really enjoyed, but it felt more like a musical with a capital M. A if I had to choose one word to describe this movie, it would be intentional. This movie knew exactly 
what it wanted to do, much like Jonathan Larson himself. Every shot was laid out with such care, every moment was so beautifully, carefully crafted, and I think that's the sign of a really great director, so I think we gotta hand it up to Lin-Manuel Miranda, guys! Especially for his first time directing a movie? I am wildly impressed. He had a very clear, unique vision, and I think he executed it beautifully. For instance, he wanted the transitions from scene to song to feel natural. The transitions in general are so smooth. I love the pacing of the movie. It really flows evenly. It's just a beautiful movie to look at. The colors, the film grain, the handheld camcorder, the musicality and the editing, they really succeed at creating this nostalgic, good old boho days vibe. Is it a fateful one-to-one -one adaption of Tick Tick Boo? Absolutely not, but I don't think it should have been. I feel like they really fully utilized this new medium's potential in that it wasn't a pro shot, it wasn't trying to be a replica of the original stage musical, it felt like a completely separate piece of art. For instance, the use of visual effects to enhance the storytelling. I'm talking about moments like the pointillism effect at the end of Sunday, getting to see John's handwriting as he takes notes and as he thinks of ideas, getting to see the inside of the pool as John compares poses that final song. You can't really do that on stage. I feel like every element was really balanced, nobody pulled too much focus. The actors, the music, the design, the pacing, the storytelling, it all just worked together so well. It was fun and playful, but there was a real sense of elegance to the film. You know, I'm curious, with West Side Story coming out just around the corner, I wonder if we're entering an era of, like, really elevated movie musicals. That would be awesome. Andrew Garfield's performance is what makes this movie Movie, though. I hope he gets some sort of recognition for his work in this because I think he was just spectacular. He's got this raw emotion and intensity, but still with incredible nuance. He played Jonathan with such passion, you could see the tears in his eyes. He was just connected in every moment. He doesn't really see himself as a singer, but I really liked his voice for the role. I know that it's not the big rock and roll Raul Esparza sound that we're used to, but I think it really worked for the character and for film. Robin de Jesus absolutely shines. He is so charismatic, so sparkly, so just perfection. And I just loved his chemistry with Andrew. It's harder to maybe show that kind of intimacy between friends, but I, I think they executed that so well. You really, really care about their friendship. Bradley Whitford is phenomenal as Stephen Sondheim. I've been binge watching all of Handmaid's Tale during quarantine, so immediately when he was on the screen, I was like, blessed be the fruit. MJ Rodriguez steals every moment she's in. She's got a couple of little lines and looks that made me cackle. Alexandra Shipp's voice is just soaring. Beautiful, golden, buttery perfection. I think everyone has heard come to your senses a trillion times and she breathed new life into it, which is quite a feat. Let's do a little lightning round of other things I wanted to point out slash things I loved. I'm always happy to see musical theater made accessible. I've said it before, but it's much easier to get to a movie theater than a Broadway one. And this one's on Netflix. It's really fun and interesting to see the blueprints of Rent within Tick Tick Boom. You can see the inspiration and the progression, and they even added in more of that for the movie. A couple of my favorite standout moments, the super ironic applause after the fight in therapy just, oh my God, annihilated me. I love that they didn't do anything fancy with Come to Your Senses. They just kind of let Alexandra sing and connect and Andrew react. The entirety of the focus group scene, just Broadway comedy superstars playing the absolute worst people. Did not see it coming and it was absolutely hysterical. The cameos in this movie are worth the watch alone. It's like playing Where's Waldo, except if Waldo was everywhere and had like a hundred combined Tony nominations between all the Waldos. I loved all of them, but the ones that made me scream were Andre De Shields, Schwartz and JRB, Danny Burstein and Judy Kuhn, and Brian Stokes Mitchell. So clearly, if you can't tell, I really, really loved this movie. There's very, very little that I might have done differently. I think she did a fine job, but personal opinion, I'm just not a big fan of Vanessa Hudgens. Joshua Henry's character was apparently based on Roger Bart? Were they going to tell us that? I didn't even know a 
until I saw it on Wikipedia. You know, inherently that is one of the caveats of this show. We're so focused on John's journey that we don't really get to meet the characters outside of their relationship to him. But that's just kind of the nature of this show, so I'm not sure it really bothers me. You know, actually, that reminds me, the New York Times mentioned that they thought that Lynn was too close to the material to direct it, and respectfully, I disagree. I think he was the perfect distance. You know, he was able to let go of things that wouldn't have worked for the movie. They call that killing your darlings in film school. Oh, sorry. <laughs> film school. For instance, they filmed and subsequently cut the song Green Green Dress, but they still paid homage to it. Lynn clearly not only has a deep love and appreciation for the material and Jonathan Larson's legacy, but he just gets it. You needed someone who really understood the piece and really understood theater people. You know, I think Lynn probably really identifies with Jonathan Larson. I think a lot of really creative people hear that tick tick boom, that pressure and need to create. Why do we write like we're running out of time? I think Lynn really did this piece justice. And I feel like this movie resonates so deeply because it came out at the perfect time. I haven't related to many musicals since the start of the pandemic and this one really got me. Quarantine has brought me a lot of clarity because as artists without our art, we've been forced to reevaluate our priorities and that's what this movie is all about. We've all felt so lost that it's incredible to see someone who's so sure of his vision. Also deeply relatable, Jonathan's position as a bystander, watching his loved ones deal with illness, feeling like he can't do anything about it, and seeing the rest of the world carry on like nothing's happening. How do you keep living and creating in the face of global tragedy? Fear or love, the choice is ours. I really needed that reminder. All in all, I loved Tick Tick Boom, and I think this movie is something really special. It really made me feel something, and I highly recommend you check it out. But those are just my thoughts. I want to hear from you. What did you think about Tick Tick Boom? Let me know in the comments down below. If you're new here, hit subscribe. Join the musical theater internet cult. Thanks again to Raycon for sponsoring this video. Click the link in the description box if you want to take advantage of that discount. I hope you're having a great day. I love you so, so much. Break a leg, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.